Now it's time to look at doing spreads and insightful readings using your Keepers of the Light Oracle cards. There's a few things that I think it's important to cover, um, especially if these instances happen to you, just to know that they are natural instances and they are very much part of the Oracle cards kind of life. Um, one of the things that you'll, you'll experience often when you're using your Oracle cards is when you're shuffling them, um, you might get a jumping card. Uh, a jumping card just might fly out of the deck and just land face upright on the table in front of you or on the floor. Jumping cards are important. They generally represent a message that you need to know from heaven. So if a card just randomly jumps out of the deck and it's facing upright or facing um, downwards, but you need to turn it over, it's definitely a message and it's not to be skipped over. So whenever you get a card that jumps out, read the message, spend some time because this is uh, your angels and your guides really giving you something that you need to know. So never take that lightly. A few other things I wanted to share was sometimes if you have smaller hands, it can be difficult to properly shuffle the cards. Just flip them on their side and use them long ways and you'll still be able to shuffle the cards. And if that's still really difficult, what you can do is put them on the table and just mix them and you can mix them all round, and that's another way of really just getting the cards to mix and shuffle. There's two spreads that I use with the Keepers of the Light Oracle cards. One is just a really quick, insightful way to get information about you and a situation you're working on. It's a two card spread, really, really easy. All you have to do is shuffle the cards, and you could be thinking about something you want insight on. And then all you do is you, you can say a short prayer over the cards, something like, thank you keepers of the light for revealing to me what I need to know about this situation. And then you'll fan out the cards. You can pick with any hand that you want in tradition, Card readers always encourage us to pick with our left hand because it's closest to our heart. You can pick two cards and you place them face down in a pile. Now, when you place the cards face down, it means when you flip the cards over, they're going to be in order. That means the first cards you pick facing you and the, the cards that follow are behind it. So the first cards here represents the situation or where you're at or you or even your greatest strength and then the second card which you can lie next to or across it is what you need to know or what you need to do about that situation now when it comes to reading the cards there's various ways we're going to look at them we're going to first of all look at the image is it making us feel safe is it making us feel powerful is it giving us a sense that we need to be courageous? Is it giving us a sense that we need to relax and breathe more? Or is it giving us that sense that, you know, things could be intense or are they soft? You want to look at the card and just kind of get a feel for what it looks like and, and what that kind of brings up in your intuition. You'll then see the name of the master or the angel or the enlightened being and here we have for the first card, Mercury. And open communication is the key word. Now, this card represents, for me at this moment, it's, it's representing where I am. Now, this is funny because I am in open communication. I am in this moment sharing with you some insightful kind of experiences that I have had with using Oracle cards. But if I was to read this in the present moment for either myself or for someone, it represents at this time um, my greatest strength being communication. It represents that I have this capacity just to speak truthfully and to get things off my chest. And that's what it says, get a weight off of your chest, speak up with love and be heard. Now let's talk about that. Whenever a card comes out, the first card always represents what you already have. Many people get themselves really uptight when it comes to doing oracle card readings because they feel like the angels or their guides are giving them a hard time for not doing something. 
but the first card always represents what you've already done. So know that if this was you, the angels, the guides, the keepers of the light are thanking you for being open with your communication, for getting things off of your chest, for kind of speaking up with love and for being heard already. And that's when it really becomes insightful. We have to recognize these amazing beings are on our side. They want to point out our strength. They want to point out our gifts. They want to point out our talents. The second card represents something we need to know or what we need to do. And here we have Bridget, and that she's this Celtic uh, goddess that represents strength. And she's an extremely fiery, a powerful ascended master and this card says inner strength now this is telling us to recognize the inner strength we already have this is telling us to recognize that in order for us to really own the gift of open communication we really need to recognize the inner strength that we have this card says, move back to wholeness, recognize you have the power. So here, the keepers of the light are, are really encouraging us not to look outside ourselves for the power, but recognize the power that we are looking for is already within. So I encourage you now to give yourself a two card spread reading. The first card represents your strength, who you are, what's going on right now. The second card represents what you need to do in order for you to tap into that gift, that strength, that light that you already have within you. So take some time now, pause the video, get your journal out, your notepad out, take note of the cards that you've picked and reflect on them over the next few days. I, I. I really believe that whatever you have picked will be an accurate representation of where you are at in your life. Now we're going to do a more complicated or complex spread called the Life Path Spread. Now this is a, a really exciting reading because it allows us to tap into the messages of our angels, our guides, and also our heart. It also allows us to clearly see an obstacle that we need to overcome in order for us to step into our true self, our gifts, and to really grow on our spiritual path. This is a great reading to do with friends. It's a great reading to do with family members because it really gives a bigger picture of the, this current situation or where you are with your life and how you can grow. And that's the one thing our angels and our guides want for us. They want us to grow in any way possible. So you would just shuffle the cards again. Remember, if any cards jump out, just put them to the side. They're gonna be extra messages um, for you to read. And you might not get any jumpers and that's cool as well, because it doesn't always happen. Once the cards are there, you can, again, you can set the intention. Thank you, keepers of the light, for revealing to me what I need to know. And then we'll spread the cards out. Seven cards this time. Picking them one on top of the other in a little pile. Three, four, five. It's fun. Seven. So once you've got your seven cards, put your cards back together, put them to the side, and here's your reading. Pile on top of each other, turn the cards to face you. The first card you see is the first card you read. Here's how it works. The first card represents you or your strength. The second card represents your life. The third card represents something that supports your happiness. The fourth is an obstacle you need to overcome. The fifth is a message from your angels. The sixth is a message from your guides. The seventh is a message from your heart. Now I've picked eight and I did not realize I had eight cards. Now this happens all the time. 
any extra cards you have or anything else that will allow you to increase your kind of awareness and your connection and you put them in the center. And it's a pretty good one. <laughs> so let's go through the cards one by one and how you would read for yourself or for someone in your life. So here is your seven card life path spread. The first card, it represents your strength. It represents something that you already have within you, a natural aspect of your character and being. Here we have, for me, is Horus, Cosmic Gateway. It says, your thoughts are magnetic and powerful. Miraculous changes are occurring. Now, with this card already being a strength, it means it's already happened. So, I would read this like this. The card Horus is coming up for you because you are the cosmic gateway. You have this magnetic ability to use your thoughts, to craft your life, to create the life that you want. You have went through miraculous changes and healed real barriers in your life in order for you to be where you are today. This card represents you being a really pivotal point in your spiritual growth where you are the cosmic gateway. You are the bridge between heaven and earth. You have everything it has to take and create the life you want. Horus is this magician or, you know, he's this Egyptian god that is all about bringing into life um, your dreams and what you want to manifest. So with this card being the strength card, it, it means we've already made some miraculous things happen. The second card represents your life. For my reading, I've got Dwal Kul and it says Dharma unfolding. Now Dharma is a Sanskrit word which means the way or the path or the life path. Now with this card coming up for my life, it represents that I am on a path and it's unfolding before me. This is a card that invites us to be more mindful. It invites us to take one step at a time. It invites us just to kind of go with the flow and trust that each step is being given. So with this card coming up for, for me and for my reading, it represents, you know, each step is being given one step at a time and really to trust in that and to trust that I am on a path and it's not about the destination, it's more about the journey. So with this card coming up and with Dwal Kul being this Tibetan master, this Buddhist master, it really encourages me just to take things slow and be more mindful of the present moment and to kind of take one step at a time and breathe deeply along the way. The third card is the card that represents something that will support our happiness. And I've picked the angel, Charity, and it says prayer and contemplation. Something that will support my journey to happiness is prayer and contemplation. The angels, the guides are telling me to connect with heaven. It says, ask and you shall receive. So this card coming up, for something to support my happiness means that if I make space for heaven's help, I will have what I need. If I make space to kind of go into prayer and contemplation, my happiness will be supported. But not only that, with this card being charity, she's the angel of service, it also shows that through service, I will be supported. So I want you to, when you're reading this card, see it as something that will support your journey to happiness. It's probably something you already know. It's just something that maybe needs a little bit more attention. Number four is the obstacle to overcome. And here I have the Buddha and it says a increased awareness, deep connection, trust your inner voice. Now, as someone who is a professional intuitive, I still have my moments of doubt when it comes to hearing guidance, just like everyone else. And with this card coming up as my obstacle to overcome, it's it's saying my obstacle is to overcome that, that sense of doubt that I get when I hear guidance come through or when I pick my, my cards that day or when I feel I need to do something that will 
encourage my growth and development on the spiritual path. It's also the card that says increased awareness. Now, I am forever being distracted in life. I'm always kind of losing where I am or being distracted by something else going on around me. This card is encouraging me to increase my awareness of the present moment. That's my obstacle to overcome. So look at your fourth card as something that you need to work on, something that you need to do in order to overcome any obstacles that are maybe happening in your life and on your journey. The next card, number five, is a message from our angels. Now, the cool thing is I've got White Eagle and the card is Ancestor Spirit and it says connect with your lineage. A family wound or pattern can be healed now. And this is really strange that this is coming up for me because recently there's been a situation occurring in my own family life that has maybe brought everyone back together again where people hadn't spoken for a long time. People are closer than before. So this is a card from my angels saying or a message from my angels saying that maybe they had something to do with it. Maybe they are giving us the opportunity to heal something that's going on in my family lineage. This is the card that represents you know, really connecting with our lineage and our, our family and our ancestors to really know who we are. It's important to, to really connect with those who are in our family because if we are doing this great spiritual work and all this healing work, it is literally going into our lineage and it will affect all those who have gone before us and also affect all those to come. The message from our guides is the sixth card. And mine's is Earth Connection, Gaia. It says, be mindful of the planet, come back to Earth, stay grounded. This is really important because I love being in nature and I regularly, uh, before I got as busy as I am today, went to my local beach and I often picked all the cans and trash that was left behind on the beach and then I would meditate there and I have not done it in ages and that was my way of connecting with the earth so I kind of feel like my guides are encouraging me to spend some time in nature again get back to the earth you know I am someone that is obsessed with recycling and making sure I can use as much as possible again and um, so this is a card that from my guide saying, you know, keep doing this because this will enrich your spiritual growth. The last card is, or the last card in the seven card spread, I do have eight, let's talk about that in a minute. The last card represents a message from the heart. And I have Kutumi, um, one of these amazing Indian masters that was alive not that long ago. And the card is Cloak of Wisdom. And it says, you already know the answer you seek. Trust what you know. So my message from my heart is to trust that sense of knowingness that I have within me. Now, with the eighth card coming out in the middle, the, the lucky card, the extra card, here's the thing that's going to support me and my growth facing fear, Kali Ma. There's a really amazing quote by the Buddhist teacher Pema Chodron and she said, unless we've experienced fear, we will never know what it's like to be fearless. And that's something I say to myself daily. This card facing fear is all about really allowing ourselves to see what our fears are in order for us to understand what it's like to be fearless. It says major spiritual changes are unfolding, this is your chance to soar. The message is self-explanatory. I encourage you now to do a seven card, or maybe it might be eight, um, spread for yourself to look at your life path, to see what card represents your strength, your life, your happiness, an obstacle you need to overcome, a message from your angels, a message from your guides, a message from your heart, and in the middle, any extra messages that will support your growth. Take note of all the cards you picked. Read it over over the next few days. You will be 
blown away by the insights the Keepers of the Light are giving to you. I hope you enjoyed doing these spreads together and I hope this will enrich your spiritual practice and your capacity to share your intuition with your friends, your family or even your clients. Have a great day.